Hi, and welcome to my channel, Good Effort Meg. Today, I will be sewing a fanny pack. Um, I'm making a couple of these as Christmas gifts, um, so don't tell anybody if you know who these are for. <laughs> Um, but I thought it would be fun to kind of show the process that I go through uh, when I'm sewing. I am not an expert seamstress. I have not had any formal training with sewing. My grandmother, she was a very talented uh, seamstress. She used to make my aunt and uncle and mother uh, some clothes when they were growing up. And even my sister and I, she would make us clothes when we were kids. So um, this is an activity that as I've been doing, uh, it's kind of created a way that I can FaceTime my Mima and uh, bond with her in a new way. And it just kind of is fun to kind of carry on that family tradition. So I hope you enjoy this journey that we're going on today. So step one of the process, like I said earlier, I did find this pattern online was to print the PDF and tape any portions that need to be put together. So I went ahead and did that. And um, this is kind of what they'll look like when they're all cut out. So you tape them all together and then you cut them all out. And that part is, you know, fairly simple and straightforward and can be done in like a few minutes or so. Um, but that's step one. So I'll go ahead and show you all of the pattern pieces. So here are all the pattern pieces all taped together and cut out. As you can see, this isn't a super complicated pattern. Um, there are only a few pieces, um, but the next step is to go ahead and lay these out and cut your fabric. So for materials, this is a yard of outdoor fabric that I chose. I wanted to use something that was durable and waterproof. It can get dirty, it can be cleaned easily, and it's also like a super colorful, fun pattern. Um, this might be a little crazy for some, but this is very much in line with the person that this is gonna be gifted to. Here's my 12 inch zipper. So this will be the bottom zipper for the uh, fanny pack and a beautiful dark, almost like royal navy blue for the top zipper. And all of these like craft materials I did get from Joann's. Next, this is the webbing. So as you can see, it's kind of this strap material and you're gonna need two yards of it. And you can either buy it like this as a pre-cut size or if you go to your local craft store they should have rolls of this in varying colors that you can choose from buckle to go around your waist so one of those and you're also going to need one of these a strap adjuster so for a list of materials this is everything you're going to need so one of the things that I always start with, because with patterns like this, there's always going to be um, pieces that you need duplicates of. Um, so I always start with going to the selvage edge of the fabric, making sure that's perfectly lined up and folding it perfectly in half. And what this will allow me to do is instead of making multiple cuts for the same piece, is I can then just lay it over the folded piece and then cut once. So here are all the pieces laid out on the fabric and they're ready for cutting. So my next step is gonna be to cut all these out.
So now that I have all the pieces cut out, I just lay the pattern pieces on top. It just helps me keep track of everything. I'm a very organized person, um, just in general. Uh, so this is just kind of how my brain that likes to see things. So originally when I was setting up my sewing machine, um, I was thinking black thread, but as I was cutting the fabric and looked more closely at the pattern, I think white thread will look better. So I'm just gonna quickly switch out my threads and just also for context, I am using a Guterman 100% polyester thread. Um, it's pretty much all purpose. Uh, I made a trial fanny pack and this seemed to work just fine. Okay, so I'm gonna swap this out real quick. So for different tools that you're gonna need other than the materials that um, you would pick up at your craft store, these are the tools that I use for my sewing, um, specifically for this fanny pack. Um, I have these little sewing clips. These are great for when you have multiple layers that um, are just too thick for like pins. Um, I'm also prone to poking myself um, with pins. So I try to use these whenever I can. It's just a little less painful that way. I have a thread ripper. Um, I have made plenty of mistakes. So I went ahead and purchased one of these ergonomic ones um, from, I believe Amazon or my local fabric store. Um, and then a little pair of scissors. Uh, this is just a set that my Mima gave me. Um, I have no idea how old these are. Um, I know that this is from her original serger that she back, bought back in the 90s, um, but I just think these are so cute. And this is just like a little clip with like the little stretchy thing. So I usually clip this on my shirt just so I don't lose it somewhere. Um, this is just your little seam measurer. I'm not exactly sure what the proper name of this tool is, but it's super handy when you're trying to measure um, seam allowances and where your needle is on your machine. Um, a zipper foot, not necessary, but definitely handy. And good old handy dandy pin cushion, tomato style with all your pins in it. Um, and then of course, a good old sewing machine, yes. My sewing machine is Star Wars themed because I love everything about space. Yes, that is Penny and Tyson. <laughs> Both of these were gifts from my husband. He knows me very well. <laughs> For step one of the construction of this thing, we're gonna start with the front panel and our small zipper. And we are just gonna put these two guys right sides together. I'm using a fabric that's very easy to tell which is your right and which is your wrong. Nest. Next is to take the front top panel and with right sides together, again, this is your right side, this is your wrong side, I'm gonna go ahead and pin this guy to the top. For this next bit, we have the front pocket sewn together. So next we're gonna take our back pocket panel and this will be the inside of your pocket. So this is what you will see when you open up the zipper. So 
Here again, you can see I'm doing right side up, right side up, and you can see they match. It's a little off, but we can put that up to my awesome cutting skills. And then we're gonna take these front side panel pieces. And these guys are gonna go like this. So that way, when they're sewn together, that's what you have. So you start kind of seeing the shape of the fanny pack coming together. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this together. Also, one other note is to make sure that before you pin this side, making sure that your zipper is on the inside of your bag. Uh, otherwise, you will not be able to use the zipper. Ask me how I know. <laughs> So this part is very important. These are not sewing scissors. I have had these since I was probably in middle school. Hi Tyson. So now you can cut the zipper off. This piece we're gonna go ahead and start working on attaching our second zipper now this is a clarification because for this particular pattern um, the gentleman who wrote the pattern didn't actually um, write out a pattern he has a YouTube video that he uses to go through the pattern and this is something that confused me so I want to make sure it's clarified here um, at this step in the process, he tells you to attach the back panel, um, and that is actually not the right panel. So if you remember from when we were cutting out the panels um, in the pattern, this is actually the back panel. And when he tells you to attach it, I, I was super confused about this because I was like, there is no way that this is the right piece. It's completely separate. So for clarification, what you should be attaching at this point in the pattern is the bottom panel. And as you can see with the bottom panel, with the piece that we created, that's a nice, pretty matching piece. When pinning the bottom panel to the rest of the fanny pack, ensure that that bottom panel is wrong side facing up. So here you can see me pinning it all together. So when I flip it over, um, you would see the right side of the fabric. Pieces, and we're just gonna find the center of 
the curve here. And to do that, we're just going to fold this guy in half. We're gonna see, I have two colors of chalk here. I don't know which one's gonna be easier to see on here, so we're just gonna do our best. And all I'm doing is just putting it right there in that crease and dragging up. See, can we really see that? Let's try the white chalk. Oh yeah, you can definitely see that one a lot better. And then we're just going to fold it the other direction. All right, now that we have the centers marked for both of these pieces, we're just going to line up these marks. And for our top panel, because one of these is going to be the top part of the fanny pack, this other side is gonna be the inner lining of the pocket. So just make sure they're kind of sandwiched with wrong sides together. And we're just gonna pin this guy into place. Right there on that zipper, perfect. Now that's all the pinning I'm gonna do here because this bit is a little uh, tricky. We are sewing a curve onto a straight, so it's a little bit easier to handle to manipulate by hand as you're doing it. And this fits a little weird. We're actually gonna be starting at the center and working our way towards the edge as we pull both of the pieces together kind of along. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower my speed. Just gives me again a little bit more control. And I'm just, right now, I'm just feeling where that zipper is. Now I'm going to do one other thing that wasn't explicitly done in the video tutorial and that's to add a top stitch to this top here. Alright, for this portion we're going to attach our flat panels and we have a top and a lining and a top and a lining for either side and we're going to have right sides facing and just like that you want to make sure you have them facing the right way so this might take me a second my brain is not working there it goes okay like that and like that there we go and then on this side we'll do like that and like that very good All right, so for this part, we're just gonna add a top stitch only to this front panel, not to this back one. So keep this back one folded back and 
we're just gonna add a top stitch. For our next step, we're going to go ahead and measure out a foot of our binding. So you're going to take your buckle, and mine has an adjuster on both ends. So for the end that doesn't have, I'll call it the claw, we're just going to put this one foot piece through here and then down through there and pull through and we're just going to make that even on the ends and this is just going to get sewn in so this won't be a true adjuster but just like that okay so for this bit you're gonna take that piece of binding strap with the buckle and line that up as close to center as you can. And we're gonna be stitching it into place through both that front and back. An important thing to note is whichever side you want facing you to make sure that when you do this, have it facing away from you. So when it's all said and done, that'll be the side facing you. All right. And again, this is just tacking it into place. There you go. And with the rest of the strapping, we will go ahead and do the same on the other side. And because we don't have a clip on this side, it doesn't matter which one you do. But again, just make sure it's as close to center as you can. Go ahead and take our back panel and mark the centers of both the top and the bottom. And similar to the other piece we did, just make sure that you have them with wrong sides sandwiched together because this will be the inside of your pocket and this will be the back of the fanny pack. All right, on to the fun bit. So, with the right side of the fanny pass facing you, kind of tuck everything in and open up that big zipper ever so slightly, because this is what we're gonna use to flip everything inside out. Bring everything forward. Just kind of make like a little bowl. And then we're gonna take this back panel. And with the markings that we just made, we're gonna go ahead and pin it all the way around. All right, now we're ready to sew all the way around. Yay! 
Now I like to trim some of these seams a little bit, just where you know, the fabric got a little funky. All right, next part is the big reveal. We get to pull out and flip it to the right side. Look at it! So the next step for this is to go ahead and add our adjuster piece to this end. And this is our adjuster piece, so this is the next step. I'm going to open that. And generally, I notice that these come packaged in two, but you'll only need one. So this one can be saved for your fanny pack fleet that you're getting ready to make. So now that'll clip together, and then this end we're going to finish off. Now for this raw end of the binding, we're just going to fold her over twice. One, two, and then stitch across. trim those threads. All right, so there you have it. Now you have your very own super cool fanny pack. So you can go and make your entire fanny pack fleet. But isn't that so cute? Now you have a place to put all your snacks. I've seen people wear these as crossbody bags. So I did want to go and show y'all the prototype that I made of this bag uh, prior to making the one in this video. Um, and the reason is because I got a lot of lessons learned that I incorporated into this video and I wanted to show you why. Um, kind of pivotal in what I want to get across on YouTube is just it's okay to make mistakes and learn from them and just incorporate them into your future projects. So you saw me backstitch a couple times over the strap um, piece of the fanny pack as we were doing the outer lining, right? Um, and the reason for that was, is on this prototype, you can see it actually started coming apart. And it wasn't because I didn't capture enough of the strap. Um, it was simply the stitch wasn't strong enough and I believe it just started kind of coming apart there. Um, so that was a major lesson learned there. Um, when I was pinning on the back of the fanny pack as well, um, with my first prototype, I actually didn't capture all of the fabric. Um, so this was the very first piece of fabric. 
And I can't even use this front pocket at all because there's a big gaping hole where I did not capture that. And then the last thing um, for major things that I discovered while doing this was uh, the zipper orientation. So with the zippers closed, you can see that I had the large zipper opening from this end and the small one opening from this end. Um, you know, my husband, he, he's so lovely. He made the comment that, hey, at least now you don't have to look down to know exactly which pocket you're opening. Um, but for a person like me that um, has an eye for details, uh, this was something that really, really bugged me. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that if I could pass along my lessons learned to you, if you decide to make this fanny pack, um, that you have that information. Um, and I just really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please show um, that through a subscription or a like. I really appreciate it. This has been a lot of fun. I know this is only my second video on YouTube, but um, you know, it's just kind of a fun new hobby for me. Um, so just give me that feedback and let me know if there's anything in particular y'all would like to see. I've got a couple other videos planned for the future, but um, I hope everybody's having a wonderful day and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.